Thanks, Nicky. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, everyone, and thanks for your attendance. Well, we're here this morning to announce that Damien Hardwick has resigned as the club's senior coach, effective immediately. This is a decision that Damien's wrestled with for some time. He's ultimately come to the conclusion that he no longer has the energy required to coach. The role of senior coach is incredibly demanding and Damien has given it absolutely everything since being appointed 14 seasons ago. Our club was coming from a long way behind back in 2010 when he, uh, along with the man alongside him here, set about the restoration of Richmond as a powerhouse club on and off the field. History was created under his watch and for that we will be forever indebted. He finishes as the longest serving coach in the 138 year history of our club. And of course, while his three premierships will be the headline, he's given our club so much more. He's taught us about genuine care, connection and the power of storytelling. He loved his players and his players loved him. And make no mistake, his decision has come as a shock to our board, but it's clear he's given it some serious thought in recent weeks and we need to respect the decision that he's made. It really is a measure of the man that he's made this decision in what he sees as the best interests of the club. Selflessness is one of his great qualities and for that Damien is and always will be revered as a Richmond man. Uh, Andrew McWalter has been appointed interim senior coach and will now embark on the process to find the next senior coach at the board level. Uh, Damien. <laughs> Thanks, John. Sort of wish I wore a better jumper, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't realise there were so many people here. But um, oh, it's been a, an incredible ride and, and one that's, uh, look, it's, it's coming to an end. But I couldn't have wished a, a better place to, to have my journey as an AFL coach and you know, the support I've received from not only the Richmond Football Club full stop, but the, the fans and our players, obviously, that was one of the more tougher conversations that I've had to do. Oh. Um, you know, the way this club supported me, gave me every resource possible, gave me the best people possible. It's a testament to, to what I think we've created. Um, and one of the longest, you know, legacies that will continue to go on. Um, the man beside me to my left obviously started a, a couple of days prior to me, but he's been enormous on my journey. And I can't thank you, Brendan, enough for, for what you've done for me and my family. Um, to John and, and the board and, and Peggy O'Neill and Gary March before, but the support when you could have quite easily at any stage probably tipped me out in 2016. The, the journey that we've responded to there was, um, I can't ever thank you enough. Uh, to my playing group, God, it was tough before, it's tougher now. Um, you know, I spoke to you before about how much I, I loved being your coach and how proud I am of, of you and you know, the three stalwarts that are here from the, the start, or the four I think it is, in, in Jack, Trent, Dylan and Dustin. Um, you know, you all, you all mean the world to me and I've enjoyed every aspect of being your coach, but more importantly, I'll enjoy every aspect of watching you continue to go on in your careers and whatever you choose to do. But um, to my family in, in the front row, it's, um, it's been a hell of a journey. You know, my kids have had half their life as Richmond, Richmond people, and you've had the good half compared to a lot of other people, so I'd be happy about that. But um, you know, the support I've given from you know, mum and dad for when I was a young kid, that upway to coma, then through my, my career, and obviously now at, at Richmond, your support has been unwavering, and you've always been there. A pat on the back or a kick in the bum, whatever it is, and to Danielle and the kids, I'm forever grateful of what you've given me and the support you've given me. And old tough is you're going all right. And Alex, thanks for the the new journey that obviously you, your support over the last couple of months has been been phenomenal. Um, but I'd just like to thank once again the Richmond Football Club for for what they've given me, the opportunity that presented itself, and it's a wonderful place. And I'd also like to thank our fans. You know, it's, um, it's a tough gig being an AFL senior coach, but the support I think I've received from the majority of people has been absolutely outstanding and will forever go down as one of the great things that I've ever been. I've been fortunate enough to be in a lot of footy clubs, but 
by far the Richmond Football Club has been the love of my life. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, to the AFL, it's an outstanding industry we're in. Um, the game itself is in great shape. It's so even, it's so challenging, and I think that's the way we want it to be. And it just all became a little bit too much for me. It was one of those ones where I, I sort of made the decision that I wasn't going to be the coach of Richmond next year. Um, I made the fatal mistake of watching The Last Dance, I think, on, on Fox, it was at some stage, and thought why it may have been. But once I decided that that part of the equation started to, to slip away, then I started to question myself and about what you know, it was like to coach Richmond. And as soon as I started asking the question more, I started to understand what the answer was going to be. So the best thing um, for myself was, was to step aside. If I couldn't give 100 per cent, there was no way I was going to coach this footy club. It gives the club the, the greatest opportunity to find the next coach, and I wish Andrew and the assistants all the, all the very best. Um, but if I couldn't give this playing group, this club, these people beside me the very best of Damien Harbick, I wasn't prepared to, to see it out. So it was a tough decision, but one I was uh, entirely grateful. So from the bottom of my heart, boys, I, I wish you all the very best. I'm going to miss you. Um, as always, I love you to death and all the people that have supported me and been a part of my journey. I thank you. Uh, I applaud you and I wish you all the very best for your for future endeavours. And that'll do me. See you tomorrow. <laughs>think it's you know it's sort of not me to, to give the send off sort of thing I've, I've had an incredible journey and I just think it's time to to step away and I'm actually looking forward to sitting down watching the game with my kids and um, just to sit there and, and, and see what it's like really but uh, I just thought once I'd, I'd committed to, to stepping aside it would be not the right thing to do for me I couldn't quite possibly give as as much as I'd like to and with the prep and it's a really important game for our footy club I still firmly believe that this club is placed to to challenge and many people look at that but I know the list here and I know the people that are here and it's much bigger than one man as we know and what we've got is a, a really really capable playing list that's capable of doing some great things. We've had a bit of luck along the way, a couple of bounces of the ball here, a couple of injuries here that didn't go um, go south but uh, I'm still sure we'll, uh, we'll give it a fair shake. <laughs> Yeah, over, over summer I thought, but I think it was one of those ones. It's as a coach, you're always questioning yourself. You know, there's a it's a lonely job. It's a it's a great job. Don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity that I receive, but it is challenging at various stages. And I think as as you become more apparent and you've had more success, the losses become harder. Um, so I sort of had a fair indication at the start of the year that I would like this to be my last year. Um, and then when the season probably didn't turn out as much as I would have liked, I started to ask myself the question about, well, am I the right man for the job? And I kept asking myself the question more and more. And as I stated previously, you know, if you keep asking yourself the question, you know the answer. So, you know, the, it was, you know, I had some conversations with some really key people around me just to make sure that I was in the right frame of mind to, rake, to, to make that decision. And it became apparent, you know, probably two weeks ago that the time was about right. And, in all honesty, I'd rather leave too early, too late. Um, the, the club means so, so much to me and I want to make sure that I leave the game loving the game, not resenting the game. But also I want to make sure that I leave this place just with the best feelings. You know, it's a celebration of what we've been able to achieve, but more importantly, a celebration of the people I've been able to meet. You know, I came, I came here seeking silverware, but the reality is I walk away thinking how much the journey was and how great the journey was. Um, so I walk away incredibly happy about what we've achieved, but more importantly, the people I've met. Oh, it has, but I think I've seen it play out a number of times. You know, I, I sort of see you know, even in, even our own coaching staff, what it can do to people that have that have lost jobs, and 
I didn't want it to be like that with this, the game, first and foremost, but also this club. You know, they've given me so much and I just felt like I couldn't give them any more. And, you know, as you said, I've seen firsthand what it can do when relationships sour with regard to, you know, coaching careers ending. And I just didn't want that to be the case. These people in this club are too special for me to be that. And I want to walk away with the very best of memories, which I will. Did you say that for before? Oh, you're actually going to answer a question, eh? Which is a great result. <laughs> Uh, we probably not at expectations playing uh, on field. I could sense the frustration, um, which is not surprising. Um, but, uh, you know, we were strongly committed to Damien through the board, through John, and to working our way through this next iteration and this next phase of growth, of growth as we have proven we've done in the past. And uh, so, um, you know, it wasn't. I mean, not surprised the decision um, upon reflection, but you know, we were committed to, to working through it. But you know, Damien said he's um, the tank's empty. And, uh, yeah, probably in the back of my mind, I had a fair indication, which was always challenging, sort of thing, but. I did know that it was was coming to an end. I, I, I thought about whether it's you know after the Geelong game, but you know it's funny the Dreamtime game is such a special game. I thought it was a, a significant moment that I'd really like to go out and you know I know Toby Nankervis, our, our other captain with Dylan, was was going to play, and it was just important to me that I think I had that that final piece of that puzzle that he did play in my final game, and it's just the way it worked out. Um, look, obviously it would have been great if we had won the game, but the fact of the matter is we didn't. But it hasn't soured my journey anymore. Um, it was just time. Like I said, it was time for a different voice. You know, I've pushed every button I can. I've tried to cook the sausages a thousand different ways and I couldn't find a thousand and one. So I think the players deserve a new voice that will hopefully give them that spark to hopefully lead to something that could be pretty special this year. And I know a lot of people have jumped off the Tigers, but I still maintain that, you know, if a bit of luck along the way, they're still very, very capable of doing what they need to do. No, I think I still would have been here today. Um, you know, it was one of those last moments that you sort of do stick around. And it's funny, um, uh, Tim and Blair, who had been very much my, my lieutenants for the, the thing, I think they picked it up after the game. So normally after a loss, we come back here and we have a few drinks and I'm straight in the board, uh, st straight in the match committee room, just trying to figure out well, what it was not you know, the next course of action. And when I caught up with them, they sensed it at that night when I didn't go into that room. I didn't start pencilling in what was a, the plan of attack for the review, and I think they probably sensed that it was, was time. You know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but as I said, it was just one of those journeys. I wanted to make sure I got the very best out of it and had that last moment with the people that I love. Well, to me, it's, it's only one person as senior coach. What people have to realise is it's so much more than, than one man. Like, we've got an outstanding group of assistant coaches, list management committee. They make decisions based on the club overall. And whilst we did invest significant draft capital, we've brought in two players in Toronto and Hopper that are going to be outstanding players for this footy club for the next six to seven years. So whichever coach takes over is going to be in a very, very good place. We've got a young job, Josh Gibkiss, that hasn't played a year. We've got Tom Lynch that hasn't played barely any games. We've got some young players that unfortunately are injured at the moment. But this list is in a really, really good place. You know, our list management team has done a wonderful job. Coach aside, this side is well placed to go forward. Oh, look, the, the biggest thing on my plate at the moment is just to, to decompress and, and let it all go. You know, I, speaking to some of the players and, you know, Dustin suggested I go to Ibiza and, <laughs> and, and Bake suggested I go to Lake Grace. So it's somewhere in between where I'll find myself. But, you know, I'm just looking forward to a break. It's been an incredible journey for 13 or 14 years, but it is very, very consuming. And, 
you know, the, the job of AFL co coach is, is very, very tough. Don't get me wrong, I love it to death, but the fact of the matter is I just need a break at the moment. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's incredible. It was, um, you know, it's a testament to the people, though. I, I sort of sit there, and as a senior coach, you get a lot of pats on the back and a lot of kicks in the backside. But as an organisation, that's what Richmond wanted to do, you know. And the man beside me, the men beside me, I should say, set a really hefty or a lofty goal. You know, many scoffed at us, but then to sit there and look at the great Nostradamus here and to get the result we're after was incredible. And it's in, it was a privilege to be a part of it, and I'm a very small part of it. The players play. You know, that's a great thing about it. If you haven't got the players, it is really, really hard to be the coach you want to be. And a lot of that falls to them and the, and the list that our recruiting and, and list management built. So um, it's something that I'll, that I'll cherish forever. But as I said, the silverware is a byproduct of the people that you meet and the journey that you have along our players. And, you know, see guys get married, have kids, and all those sort of things has just been such a delight. And, you know, I'm really fortunate to be a part of that. So that, to me, is probably bigger than the, the silverware aspect. <coughs> no, listen, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with my decision. Mine's just basically the fact that I've, I've pushed every button I think possible for these guys and try and get them to play. And, you know, the soft cap will always be an issue. And I can understand why, um, but that's probably for other people to discuss on this day. Mine's just all about, I just want to celebrate the time that I've had here and the, the journey that I've had and the, the wonderful people and support I've had along the way. So um, that to me is the most important thing of today. Yeah. Yeah, he's been enormous, and yeah, you know, it's no coincidence he comes to our footy club, and he's like a he's like one of those um, those Buddha dolls you rub the rub his belly sort of thing, and the good good luck follows you sort of thing. But he's been an incredible, you know, servant to our footy club, but footy in general. And you know, Barmy's one of those guys that um, is very forthright in his opinions of the game, and sometimes when you do overcomplicate it, he'll tell you. And that's a great thing about Neil. You know. I've, got enormous respect for the man. I've got a great understanding of what he's given to me and our football club. The pressure he's taken off me with doing the things that I don't love to do, it's amazing by doing that, he's helped us get better. Um, he's a magnificent ambassador, not only for our game, but for the AFL in general. And I couldn't be more appreciative of what he's done for me or the club. Yep. It's funny, uh, I speak to this about the players all the time. It's, it's not the games, it's just the events. You know, it's like this year, you know, Camden McIntosh, the players selling his car while we're on camp. It's those sort of things that make footy clubs special. You know, we'll sit there and we'll have reunions along the way, but it won't be the, the grand finals we'll be speaking of or the great wins. It'll be the relationships we've forged and the stories we've got. You know, the thing I'll miss most is walking in here every day and understanding that the first people I'm going to see are Tim Livingston or Blair Hartley or Jack Ross, Thompson Dow, Hugo Ralph Smith on that couch having coffee in the morning. They're the things that I'm really going to miss. I'll miss the combative nature of the game, no question, but I'm really going to miss the fact that I don't get to see the, the very special people in my life every day. Yeah. I like think so, Tom. I mean, I've done a few contracts with Damien over the years, and he's always said, "When I'm done, I'm done." I'll tell you, irrespective of the contract, and 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 that's how it's been realised. It's a it's a measure of Damien that he's always put the club first. Um, this is uh, this is just an occasion, um, but it's also a measure of the club and I guess the strength of our shared leadership as well. And and. Uh, this is sad, don't get me wrong, you know, I love this man and uh, a lot of people do in this room as well. And, uh, but we'll celebrate him and acknowledge his incredible contribution, but yeah, it's onward and upward. Um, we're looking forward to um, writing the next chapter of this incredible story of Richmond Football Club and we've got an incredible team um, on and off field and 
um, that's a really exciting opportunity and energise all of us. I'm not going to lie, I did fill up the, my car and the kids' credit, kids' cars on the club card no, yesterday. So no, before you didn't, I, I cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a better chance of seeing Santa walk down Burke Street, I reckon, than that, Tony, to be fair. I, I've enjoyed what I've done. And look, the media do a wonderful job and we understand the landscape they're in. And it's a tough job. Like, the, the fact of the matter is, it's the thing about AFL footy, we, we do go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the media, but there's not a bad person in footy, I reckon. We all have jobs to do and we understand that. And whilst I go crook every now and then and all that sort of stuff, it's nothing apart from me just showing my frustration. But I've very rarely met a bad person in AFL footy and AFL media. So... Um, but hey, no, nah, not yet. I'll, I'll speak to Kane. But we're, you know, Kane and me are great mates. Like the fact of the matter is, it's all a little bit of show, as we know. And you know, he's been incredibly supportive of me as of him. And we're premiership teammates, and you know, we'll continue to be lifelong friends as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't spoken to Gil. Like I said, it was been a pretty busy day yesterday. We just speaking to players and just making sure I touch base with everyone. It was quite exhausting, actually. And you know, I just had to make sure that the, the people closest to me and the people at this footy club knew exactly what was going through my head. And um, it was just important that I touch base with all the right people. And it was hard. Um, but you know, I'm glad I, glad I did it. And I'm glad I've done it the way I have. Oh, look, this all happened pretty quickly, John. So we'll work through that. and, and um, redefine you know, the attributes to be the Richmond coach for the next 10 years. The game's evolving. We want to find the next Damien Hardwick. Um, we, uh, we think we're a pretty attractive proposition. We're a strong club with a strong culture. Um, we're pretty confident that uh, we've got an environment where a coach would thrive in our football club. So, Because of this selfless decision, it gives us the opportunity to, to uh, get ahead of that and um, Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think one of the things I, I sort of sit back and and, and Toby Nankervis touched off on it today about I wanted to create an environment where the players would walk in with a smile and regardless of outcome would walk out with one. Um, and I hope I've achieved that. And, and some of it was through you know the ability for for me to to you know make my energy you know, and the players to feed off that and some of it was from my bad jokes and, and that. And, but the reality is I think that's the one biggest thing, you know, that I, I sit there and I hope they've learned some life lessons off me. But the fact of the matter is I reckon I've learned more life lessons off my playing group than they've learned off me. So it's been an incredible, incredible journey. And one last story probably before I go is I, I rang the great Jack Rewalt and um, I sort of said, oh, I made you available to catch up. And of course, Jack made it all about him. <laughs> he thought I was going to talk, sort of, but I said, no, mate, this isn't about you for once in your life, sort of thing. So uh, he'll be deeply embarrassed about that, but it just sums up Jack, to be fair. <laughs> I know nothing about that, Tom. That's just media speculation. Um, you know, I'm committed to this next chapter of the Richmond Football Club, and um, which all take ownership of, and you know that's my focus. Tony, just before we go, I know you don't like talking about yourself, but do we? How much do we underestimate how hard it is to be a senior coach? Like, someone would have been making up for last year, just a couple of months, nothing. Yeah. It is. It's incredibly hard, but it's also rewarding at the same time. But it's like a grieving period. After every loss, you, you go into, and I've got a lot better at managing, trust me, but before that, you go into this cave where you just sit there and you're trying to get out. And me and Clark, and my great mate, used to laugh about it all the time. We used to always bring each other out of that cave yet, sort of thing. And, you know, I've got a lot better at managing that. But there are times where you feel yourself going into that, that dark place where you don't really need to go. And, you probably find a lot more about yourself when things aren't going well, if that makes sense. Because when things are going 
you know, upbeat and great and all that sort of stuff, but you find a lot about yourself and your football club when things aren't going well. And that's the one thing I'll say about this club. They're absolutely outstanding. You know, the care, the love that not only John and Brendan have, but the playing group have with regards to that is incredibly important. And that's what makes footy club special. There's not a better place to be when things aren't going well than a footy club. There's uh, so much care and love in the place that it makes it a pleasure to be a part of. Oh, well, he, was a, he was a good coach. The evidence bore that out. Um, football is about a program. There's many elements to performance. There's a few things that are tweaking and changing. But fundamentally, we believe we had a fine person and a, and a very good coach who was making strong progress. And in the internal measurements, we were making finals. Um, 16 was a bit of an aberration, we felt. Um, so I felt the board at the time, you know, I learned a lot through that process about the, the importance of a strong, committed, united board. And, um, and it was about ignoring the noise, do what we have to do, get on with the job. Um, the rest is history.